up everybody it's zach from at premier soccer investing coming at you with another video for slap socks fc youtube podcast it's going to be a mailbag episode let's get into it first question thoughts on virgil van dyke i want to buy in but he's a defender is it too risky so here's the thing about defenders and this goes for virgil van dyke too i would not buy in for investing purposes as they do not carry the same value that attackers do they don't get the same height mainly because they don't score goals. But if you're in it to collect him, now's a good time to buy. His prices are pretty low due to his ACL injury. But for investing, it's not a good move in my opinion. Do you think the Euros will be a good time to buy vintage with people fixated on modern? I think the Euros will be a great time. Or actually, I think the time to buy vintage is right now because the whole market, when the Euros hit, the whole market will be hot because many people have entered the market Modern will be going nuts, and a rising tide will raise all ships. So if modern goes up, vintage will go up too. So if you believe in vintage, which you should, the vintage market is a very good place for your money. Now is the time to buy it, not waiting for the euros to start because the whole market will be up then. Next question. How much room to grow do the Messi and CR7 2006 World Cup stickers have? They have a lot of room to grow for two reasons. First, the cards and the stickers will continue to rise over the coming years. Low pop, tough grades, first World Cup for two of the greatest ever. Second, I could see the stickers eventually hitting around 40% of the car prices in a PSA 10, maybe a little lower. And as you can see, they are not anywhere near that yet. So definitely room to grow on that front too. So for those two reasons, the stickers have a lot of room to grow. Will the new PSA prices affect wax prices? Yes, I think it'll have a small effect, and here's why. So the reason people rip wax a lot of the time and feel somewhat secure about it is that they know they can grade the base and make their money back. With PSA's price increases and the longer turnaround times, that doesn't be that becomes a lot feasi less feasible of a play. So that could cause a little bit of a dip in wax prices, but overall, I think they'll hold pretty steady and continue to be a pretty safe area to put your money that goes up semi steadily over time as more gets wick ripped and more the singles rise in price from those wax sets who will reach one million dollars first messi or cr7 i would not be surprised if the next time this card sells it's a million dollar sale but even if it isn't it will be messy as his cards have always carried more value than cr7 because more people view him as the goat over cr7 so messi will be the first to hit a million for sure is top seven wants to buy with all the young talent coming out of the states Yes, for a couple reasons. First, Topps Chrome MLS is going to be a relatively cheap rip, 100 to 120 a box most likely. Second, it should be heavily laden with rookies. And if you really know the American prospecting game, there's definitely opportunity there for guys like Caden Clark or many others. But you have to really be deep into the prospecting game, especially in the U.S., to, buy, to make this a buy for you. So it's not for everybody. Do you think David Beckham is still under value? Good investment. Yes, this is 95 Raven, PSA 10 rookie, $2,800. I think Beckham is extremely undervalued and a very good investment because he was such an iconic player for United, Madrid, and England. And due to him being the guy who kind of put MLS soccer on the map in the U.S. during his time with the Galaxy and now owning an MLS team in Inter-Miami FC, also, his kids are very famous, keeps him in the spotlight too, and he remains a prevalent part of the culture. So definitely great investment, for sure undervalued. With Mbappe card seeing a big increase, there's, is there still a buying opportunity for Euro slash World Cup? 100% there is. If you believe that Mbappe is going to continue to score goals in the UCL and that PSG has a good chance to win, he's going to go up. Same thing in the Euros. If he scores goals and France is looking good, he goes up. And I think both of those will happen. And his base prism tens, this is just an example of his cards, it's not the end all be all. Twelve hundred dollars around for a PSA ten. They were at one point three thousand dollars in August. I don't know if they hit that again, but they could hit clear two thousand dollars for sure as more people enter the market than Bappe hype builds and he continues to see great success on the field. So yes, still major buying opportunity for Mbappe. Is Hall in a sell right now, considering he won't be in the twenty twenty Euros or buy in the fall? No, because as we've seen over the last few months, Holland's prices are linked to Mbappe's prices. When one of them goes up, the other goes up and vice versa. And Mbappe prices will be going up in the Euros. 
So he's not a buy. He's not a sell right now because of that. Also, it is extremely, extremely difficult to try to predict the market and like try to buy back in on players, especially a player as popular and as good as Holland. So if you believe in Holland, I would just hold and continue to buy more. If you don't believe in Holland, you're happy with the profit you made, then now's the time to sell. But I would I would hold Holland right now. What would be the catalyst for a crash in the market if it were to happen? A crash is not coming, especially to the soccer card market, anytime soon for a multitude of reasons. First, just sports cars as a whole continues to grow both in America and in the rest of the world. Second, soccer as a sport is growing rapidly in the U.S. and will be further helped along by the fact that we're in a golden generation for the U.S. men's national team and we got a World Cup coming here to the U.S. in 2026. Additionally, we have hundreds of millions of people that play FIFA all around the world and blow their money every year on Ultimate Team that's worth nothing after a year. If a fraction of those people get in the cards, that causes a huge boom. Same with the billions of people that just watch soccer and love the sport if they get in the cards. So there's opportunity there. Europe is a rapidly expanding market as they get more and more allocation. The hobby gets more and more prevalent there. I mean, we're seeing it. England's going to have a, a huge card show in, the, in a couple months. First time I think that's happened in a long time. Uh, I've heard rumors about a card show going down in Belgium sometime this year too, maybe. Like it's growing rapidly in Europe, Asia too. Australia has seen a ton of growth. So soccer car market, I think we'll see almost nothing but growth over the next couple of years. So yeah, a crash is just not going to happen anytime soon. What's the ceiling for big cards of Messi and Ronaldo in 2014 Prism? Well, I just, this is my card, but it's a good example for this question. 2014 Prism World Cup, Prism matchups, Prism's Reds out of 149. I think all the Prism color for Messi and Ronaldo is a good buy long term because Prism is such an iconic set and Messi and Ronaldo are the two goats and Prism color is rare and everyone loves it. So yeah, ceiling is a lot higher than what the prices are now for those type of cards. How do you feel about tickets from important events slash games? I think it's super cool. We've seen the big sales that are happening in that subset of the market in basketball, baseball, and football. It hasn't really started to happen yet in soccer, but there's opportunity there. I just, I don't know the market well, but I, it's really intriguing for sure. Like I would love to have a ticket of like Messi's first game or something like that. That'd be super cool. And I think that would carry value. So if you know it, definitely opportunity there and, Really cool collecting stuff, too, in that space. What is the most impact on a card value? Great performance, rumor transfer, or injury? So I use this post because these three players kind of fit this. Fati had the injury, caused his prices to dip a little, but now they've been steadily rising. And then Holland and Mbappe have great performance and rumor transfers on their side. But their big price spikes came after big performances in the UCL. So I would say a great performance on a big stage is what causes the most impact on a card value. Not a rumor transfer or an injury, though. Those also will affect it. It's great performance that carries the most impact. Will other grading companies take advantage of PSA's price rise? Well, I think there's opportunity for those grading companies. I don't know if any will truly be able to take advantage of it because you have Beckett, whose customer service isn't the best. Their prices are also pretty close to PSA's, and their turnaround times are basically as bad as PSAs also you have SGC who just raised their prices um, seemed very arrogant in their marketing in my opinion their slabs are really cheaply made you can crack them with a fingernail and I don't like the look of their labels and they don't add much value so I wouldn't I know people like SGC I'm personally not a fan of it HGA really intrigues me I like the look of their slabs the problem is they don't they only grade around 1,500 cards a week, maybe a little more. I could be wrong, but it's around that number, which is a drop in the bucket compared to what PSA is grading a week. So if they can't scale up fast enough, they might get left behind. And then CSG, those labels that take up half, that are this half the size of the card, it looks awful. So I wouldn't grade there either. So while there's opportunity for those grading companies, I still don't see anyone really capitalizing fully and i think psa remains king and remains the dominant force of grading in the hobby for the foreseeable future how to look for value prospects other than the, other than the top players for people new to collecting soccer the main thing is watch as much games as possible and from 
leagues that are known for prospects like the MLS now, the Dutch league, the Portuguese league, the French league, the Europa League always has some nice prospects. And then a couple good accounts to follow on Instagram in that respect are at Wonder Kids and at Rising Ballers because they cover all the top young players in the world, like U23 Premier League, all of that. Just basically watch as many games as possible and do as much research as possible. That's how I find value prospects. What are your thoughts on the 2011 Upper Deck MLS Alex Morgan card? As we can see, this has started to go up around $100 in a month. It's a pretty good return. But I think it's an awesome card. She's a legend. She's one of the best American soccer players ever, male or female. And they're very interesting in the medium term, too, because the next Women's World Cup, she's still most likely going to be the U.S.'s best player, and the U.S. will have a great chance to win it again. I like her cards. I think it's a good play. Thoughts on Futera Unique Live versus Set Cards? Not a fan of Futera. I don't. Their cards really don't carry much clout in the hobby, I guess. I mean, they, some of them look nice. And if you're buying it to collect, like, buy what you like. But investing-wise, I would stay away. Stick to Panini and Tops. Thoughts on investing in a PSA 8 sticker of Mbappe? I'm assuming by this question you mean the 2016 Panini Foot PSA 8. And even though it's got, it's had a drastic price increase from five to $700, the beginning of February to $2,200, dollars in the beginning of March. I still think it's a good buy long-term. Super tough grade, low pop, Mbappe's main true rookie, and he's going to be – he's his career tra trajectory is on the path of him being the best or second best player in the world over the next decade. So, And if he follows that path, you're not going to see – these prices that low ever again. So uh, definitely a great investment if you believe in the player, which I do. What's your opinion on first rookie versus first World Cup cards? So I like both. I think they're both good buys, but the one that will always carry the most value is the first rookie shown by the Ronaldo first rookie, 200 grand, first World Cup, like 15, 20 grand. Granted, the Pops – the pop's a little higher on the first World Cup and all that, but it would still, the first rookie would still carry a lot more value than the first World Cup, but there's still opportunity in both for sure. What would you say is Holland's rookie card? What do you think about the Holland hype? Well, these are his main four rookie cards the finest, the Topps Chrome, the Sapphire, and the Bundesliga. And what I, I, the Holland hype completely justified. That man just is a machine. All he does is score goals in big games. He's super fun to watch. He's a really. He seems like a really like exciting person to just haul and hype, extremely justified. He's looking like he's going to be the guy winning the European Golden Boot every year the next decade. Like he looks that good. The hype totally justified in my opinion. What do you think about the Panini rookie Lionel Messi number 74 Champions League 2005? I really like this sticker for three reasons. First, first Champions League sticker or card, but sticker in this case which I like. Second, the price isn't astronomical yet. As you can see, a PSA 9 for 660 in February. And third, I really like how it says Luis Leonardo Messi on the sticker, which is rare, has a full name. I think that's a quirky little thing that people will latch onto and enjoy buying and place value in. So I really like it as a buy. Will the rise in Hall With the rise in Holland prices, do you think the Mbappe prices are undervalued and will catch up? Yeah, I mean, they're just going to keep flip-flopping. One will be worth more than the other, depending on what happens in their games. But this summer, Mbappe prices will pass Holland most likely because Mbappe's in the Euros. He's a better shot at winning the UCL. He's a good shot at winning the Euros. So Mbappe will pass, but they're going to keep like flip-flopping each other for the next few years, I would imagine. What's your plan on submitting to PSA? What type of cards? As you can see, PSA, very expensive. So my strategy now is to grade less cards at the higher level service, I think it's a better play moving forward. And then maybe do an occasional bulk sub, but I have to be comfortable with not seeing those cards for probably well over a year. So I would say grade less at the higher levels and be a lot more selective is the better play with in regards to PSA moving forward. Best soccer product to buy right now for good ROI. ROI. I know we've talked about this 2006 World Cup box a lot on this channel. It's a super hot box right now. The price has been rising a lot. But I still think if you buy right now and you hold for two years, you will see a great return of investment on that. 
because more and more of this stuff gets ripped. The, the singles from not just Messi and Ronaldo, but all the other players in the set are rising in the PSA 10 prices. And it's an iconic box, iconic set of cards. So people are going to continue to go after it. So I still think that's a good box to buy if you're going to hold. And then a box more of a better rip, I think you're going to see good ROI on. It's the 2020 21 Topps Chrome UCL box. It's releasing at the end of May, scheduled to release. And you can pre order right now for 500 to 550 a hobby box. And with EPL Prism selling for $700 a box with a really weak rookie class, this box seems like a great move play to me because the rookie class in this is going to be stacked. There are some major, major rookies that are going to be in this set. So I think you're going to do well both ripping or holding this back box but i think it's going to be a fun rip and a rip you're going to get a lot of value out of due to how many rookies that should be in this where do you see mbappe world cup prison psa 9 prices being in 2022 while i don't have a number for you they will be a lot higher than they are now because we're going to have the world cup hype more people have entered the market everyone loves prism everyone chases prism and Mbappe will be one of the hottest players in the next couple of years for sure. So they will be higher than they are now, no doubt about it. Someone not named Rashford or Mbappe who you think will have increased prices 30 plus percent by the Euros? I'm going to tweak this question and go through the Euros because I don't know if Kane will have increased 30 plus percent by them, but I think he will by the time the Euros have ended. But Harry Kane, captain of England, really good shot at winning. Top striker in the world. He's going to get to showcase his talents on a world stage. That Tottenham, unfortunately, doesn't always provide. It pains me to say it as I'm a Tottenham fan. I like Jao Felix because Atletico, UCL, they're still in the UCL. And Portugal, I really like this summer. I think they're going to make noise in the Euros as they seek to defend their crown. And I think he's going to be a key part of that. So I like his prices, his cards. And then Jaden Sancho, he's really turned up the form the last couple of months, and I think he's going to carry that into the summer. So I think Sancho's a good buy for the Euros right now too. Which leads perfectly into the next question of what's your Euro investment strategy? My strategy is to buy players that I think will have a really good tournament and buy them now or in the past couple of months and be ready to flip them during the tournament after, after they play as how I think they will. And generally, I'm trying to stick to players who are on teams who I think have a good shot at winning because. It's tough to, even if a player like scores a goal, but they lose, it's tough to see that price increase. So players on the favorites who are a bit undervalued, in my opinion, that I think will have a good summer, that's my year investing strategy. Similar to expected versus market value, can you also overlay how you forecast populations to increase over time? So just generally, as a basic way to look at it, is there's a tiny bit of a spike in the pop count in the first three months after release as people fast grade some of their cards would be the first graded to get a, to sell for a premium. Then it kind of stagnates. And then there's another big jump in the next year to two years as all the cards that were submitted on the bulk value start entering the, the pop count. And then the pop count will start to resemble what it will in the next coming years. But basically, as time increases, when more wax is ripped, more is graded, more will enter the pop count. Thoughts on Topps Crystal. Shunned in the past, but gaining steam with the Holland rookie card. I don't think the Topps Crystal set as a whole is gaining steam. More that just Holland is super hot and all of his cards have been gaining steam. I would still stay away from Topps Crystal. I'm not a big fan of the look of the product. And I'd much rather have Topps Chrome or Topps Finest. And it's more of like a third tier lower rate product. So I would still stay away. But I mean, there's I'm sure there's opportunity there. Who's going to be the new face of Barca when Messi departs this summer? Fati, Pedri, or someone else? It has to be these two ballers in this picture, Fati and Pedri, for sure. They really, if they're fit, they look like they're going to be the face of Barcelona for the next couple of years, for sure. They both look like an unreal talent, so yeah, I have to go with them. And last question of this mailbag episode, what's a better box investment? 17 tops Chrome UEFA for Champions League or 19 tops Chrome Bundesliga? Well, I do love the 19 top scrum Bundesliga. I like the look of the cards. and I love that it's a Holland and Reyna rookies in that box. 17 top scrum UCL is better because it's the first year of top scrum Champions League. So you get a premium on like the Messi and Ronaldo cards from that set because it's their first top scrum. And then you have quasi rookies, players like Pulisic and Bappe and Trent Alexander-Arnold, among others that also sell for large amounts of money. 
And I think the cards, especially the color cards in that set, look absolutely awesome. So I would have to go with the 17 Top Scrum UCL set for sure. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for the mailbag this episode. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Shoot me a DM at Premier Soccer Investing with what you want to see on the channel going forward. Thanks for watching. Peace.